2080. Industry rule number 4080. Like a couple of people are shady. Number 4080, record company people are shady. You made it. <laughs> you, you made it when you got signed. Yeah, you know, I remember, I remember when like K Solo got signed to Atlantic and Dasa mm -hmm. Fest got signed to Atlantic and Red Man with the Def Jam. And I remember saying, What's wrong with K Solo? <laughs> like, like, what's wrong with Dasa Fest? But that was just them spreading the wealth mm -hmm. at that point in time because Sylvia Rome wanted a piece of hip hop. So it wasn't, so it wasn't in hip hop land. Mm. She would that Electra wanted wanted to, Atlantic wanted to be in the hip hop badly, badly, and all they had was MC Light at that point in time. So that's when they went in and, and did the things they did there. So all right, so so you can speak enough about number four before you move on. Uh, aftermath. So, so aftermath's impact cultural. So aftermath has the best coast to coast impact. I think of all of them, to be honest with you, okay? Um, Def Jam was hip hop and hip hop was something to be discovered. So we all went to it to go see what it was, almost like discovering a TV show, discovering Game of Thrones, discovering The Wire, mm -hmm. discovering Oz. We want to know what that's about. We know what that's about, okay? Mm -hmm. Most of them, where's our record? But remember, when, when, when uh, Montel joined it, this is how we do it. It was very much hip hop. People were like, I don't know what the fuck they're doing over at Def Jam, <laughs> okay? I'm not okay with this. Okay, he's sampling Slick Rick. I'm still not okay with this. His ass from California. I'm not okay. Hmm. We ate it, but we were not okay with it for damn sure. Hmm. <laughs> okay, everybody knows that. You gotta get your move on. We hated that. Hmm. <laughs> we hated that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Drove us back yeah. crazy. You're so right. <laughs> okay, but that's what that. But that's but that's that culture was. Aftermath was the first time we says, when the country says, what are they doing? Right. What are West they Coast, doing? Midwest, yes. East Coast. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre is a white boy rapper. Where? What is he doing? Mm -hmm. And then we even know we're already listening to the record. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Dr. Yeah. is a white boy rapper. Who is it? And we all like, oh, it's the high my name is guy? That's Dre? Mm -hmm. Which was true, showed a lot from Dre production wise. Yeah. absolute left turn from what we thought he would do musically to make that happen. He's like, what the, right? So what is he doing? So, and, and all of Dre's signings are first round draft picks. Matter of fact, idea, Dr. Dre, you should make an album called First Round Draft Picks and the album should be a compilation album of your first round draft picks. It should be Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Game, and Kendrick Lamar. And 50. 15, yeah. All first round draft picks. When he hand picks them. Didn't, we, but, didn't Buster son do something with Aftermath? Yeah, and, but, that's, and but, Bilal that's, but, but he's not a first round draft pick. He no, no, career but you had Bilal. But he, 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 did big bang, he did Big Bang on it. Big he did touch your, the Touch Your Bring It album was yeah, on Aftermath. Yeah. Um, but Back on My Bullshit. But too, we're at a point now where, that's the name of the album, Back on My Bullshit. Back BS. on My Bullshit. Um, when Dre puts an artist out now, we just wait for it to happen. He's almost, wow, I almost said it. I guess I am. He's almost Barry Gordy-ish with it, where he dubs you the person. It's just a matter of time before the record comes. I remember I remember when Kendrick first wrote his very first album. I remember, what was, remember that record he had Good with Dre? Remember the record he had with Dre? Yeah. Right, yeah. Which, was a, which was a decent radio record. And I kept saying to myself, yeah, but it's, it's something else is coming though. This guy's gonna, this guy's gonna be something different because that's what Dre does. Dre, Dre trains them, sets them up, gives them two, three hit records, then says, "Take off, just come back when you come back when your album's almost done." Right. And look, did you like you? You do realize Anderson Pack appears on Silk Sonic courtesy of Aftermath. Yeah, he's on Aftermath. Really? No, no. Oh yeah. No, no, after, uh, Anderson Pack. Anderson Aftermath. Pack is on Aftermath. Oh, yeah. hey, people don't recognize this. Eric, go back here. Innocent Pack yeah, yeah, is yeah. all over the, the, the Compton, Compton album. Compton album. That's when I first heard him. Yeah, he's was all on the Compton over album. The Compton album. My joint on there is, is Animals. <sighs> Fire. Jeez. There's one right there. There's, <laughs> Animals is my favorite is track the on the Compton. Kendrick at the end? Mm. Yeah. No. Dre raps with him at the end. Uh, uh, 
Oh no, that's what the great. I like. I like the no, but animals. I'm talking about the Anderson Pack animal song. Don't come around here acting like we all a bunch of animals. And then Dre raps the next. That's my favorite joint. But the one you're talking about is my second favorite song. That's my favorite record. Where the cars revving up. Yeah. And the boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah, that's fire. Yeah. The two of you harmonizing. And that album didn't get played like it. I mean. It's almost, almost. It's we discussed. We had a discussion it, it, about that. Like on he aged out. out a little bit on that album. Yeah, because he said a lyric. The, he said a lyric. He said a lyric on the album. I was like, "Ooh, that's an old way." He said, it was he, said "He said something like, about on that on that same record, right?" He said something. He said left hand, right hand, Scotty Pippen both ways. Oh yeah, I, yeah, and I yeah. Said, and I said, yeah. "Scotty Pippen yeah. on a rap lyric now." Like Scotty Pippen's been retired. For like, like kids wouldn't even know what you're talking Scottie about. Scotty Pippen's been retired yeah. for like fifteen years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should have said Damian Lillard. How old is Dre? How old is Dre? Dre's gonna be 56, 57. Yeah, so th- this is kind of where, where I want to kind of go off for a sec, but not too far off. Here we go. Because I was thinking about the other podcast. And I remember y'all y'all podcast. were getting on me for when we were talking about kids and what we listened to and whatever. <laughs> we, we, I want to say this. No, turn. I want to say this because me. No, <laughs> because me and Lou had this conversation when I first came in here and we were talking. Is this the third left to the right? No, no, no. And we were talking, and I was saying to him, I was saying at our age. We should be concerned, like talking about Dre's age, whatever, our age now, where we're at. You know, I do have grandkids and I do Oof. care about what they listen to. Oof. And, 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 and you know what I'm saying? And I do. But, you know, so it's important to me, like what they listen to. And when I say, oh, I'm not into this kind of thing or too much cursing, whatever. And you say, well, you sound like how our parents were. I'm a parent now. I'm a grandparent now. I'm not just counting And that. I have to care. And I have to like, I supposed to care. And about that, number one, and also I want the youngins, when I always talk about the history in the beginning and and Mr. Magic and the Supreme Team show, I want them to know their history. I want them to go back. I think it's the respectful thing to do in this game or, or loving this game. And you need to know these things. You need to know where it was birthed, how, like, when I tell the stories of recording Mr. Magic and all this other stuff and the first video shows and these artists, it's important, I think, for people to know that don't know. And to respect it, and and you know, and respect the craft and the birth of it. So let me. So let me. A couple of things so I just want to throw out. So let me uh, add to that mm-hmm. and give you a little bit of I, my favorite word every time we do any this perspective. Mm-hmm. We have to we have to deliver information in an arena where they're able to receive it, and a lot of times the way we deliver information is by telling them, telling them, telling them, telling them, and what happens is they like I don't want 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 want. Right. When I when I when I entertain young people in my house and they're of the right age, right? I take them places. The right age of like which is what let's say for, I'll, I'll give an example which is relevant. They're not relevant, but it's, let's say for example a person is a, a firearm enthusiast. Hmm. And he wants to talk about safety. Right? He would take a fifteen year old boy or a fourteen year old boy to the gun range. He's not going to talk about guns. He's going to take him to the gun range. And he's going to have him clean up clean up the ammo that's out there, put on the headphones to make sure he's not getting his ears blasted off. Mm-hmm. Okay? He's going to show him how to hold a firearm safely. And he's going to say, no, nah, you can't shoot it today. I want to shoot. No, nah, you ain't shooting today. Because you don't know the safety part of it. Clean up this ammo. Pick up these cartridges. Okay? Close this up, bup, bup, bup. Not just say, back in the day, this is what we did. We have to give information where the kids receive it, because that's exactly how we did. We didn't do it by what they told us, we did it by what we learned from it. So why do we love hip-hop so much? Why do we love music so hot so much? Like I said before, because we touched the record player. We lived it. We touched we, the record player. We lived player. the era. Now, nobody, nobody, nobody told us this is what happened. We touched the records, okay? We were, we, were, we, were, we were tangibly involved in certain things. Lou played pianos as a piano in the house. Not, not, not because somebody says, you know what we did back in the day, Lou? We played. No, it was a piano in the house in which somebody was actually playing, and then he walked over to the piano, and they said, play these three. And they played a C chord, <laughs> which is the first chord you play when you learn how to play a piano. Right. Start from okay? the C. And then from there, he learned how to do And he said, then, right, Lou? You played all three notes together, Right? <laughs> Then you played the C, the e, right? Then you played the three notes individually. You learned how they sound kind of togetherish, but yet different. You became enamored with it and you jumped into it. So bringing it full circle to your point of 
they absolutely have to know their history. Just like we spoke about before. If, you, if you're going to be a 90s baby, which all these kids to say they are now, know where this music came from. But within that, we have to walk them to it more so than tell them about it. Because that's no different than what we did. Our parents told us what to do. We said, eh, eh. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you think, for instance, when hip hop was really powerful and in the beginning it came out and it was strong and it was rocking and all the parents that didn't like it. Do you think the difference in the way I am with hip hop and, and feel about it and the way I carry myself as, as a person who's a, I guess you could say I'm a collector, I'm a music uh, historian. My thing is our parents, hip hop was new to them. We were born, now I'm a grown man, but I lived it. My mother, when she heard it, it was new. What is this? She wasn't young like us out there playing and in, in, in it and involved in it. But when she heard it, it she was like, well, I like Heavy D and I like Houdini. I like the way, then she had to think she liked because it sounded like R&B. But is there a difference in, you always say you sound like your parent or whatever, but the difference is when hip hop came out, I was 11, 12 years old. Living it, and my mother was an older lady and said, what the hell is this? Mm. I don't like this, what is this? Mm. It's a big difference. So that, and, and I think that makes a difference. No, I, 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 I don't, first of all, answer your question is yes, okay? That's an absolute yes, okay? But the other aspect of it is, is that we were still brought along with the music. So just like how you said, how you said that, uh, you were 11, 12 years old, and your mother said, what is this, right? But you and your mother, when you were six and seven, were doing Isley Brother things. Absolutely. We're doing Absolutely. Earth, Wind, and Fire things. Absolutely. And if you wasn't doing Isley Brothers things, then we don't get juicy. Mm -hmm. And to me, <laughs> absolutely. Okay? And, you were doing the, and when you were 12, right? When you were 12, and you were liking hip-hop, the barge was popular. The Bards was doing Stay With Me and Rhythm of the Night. And if you're not doing those things together at 12, you don't get one more chance. So with that being the case, my only point is, is that you were, yes, it was different, but y'all was still intertwined doing things together in reference to learning the craft of music. Because as much as she doesn't know what DJ equipment is and turntables on, what scratching is, you do know that the break on Apache is a breakbeat mm -hmm. from an older record that's older than you yeah. that she may have danced to when she was younger. The bongo rock. Okay? But, but that's how y'all come together. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is for this generation, it's the same thing. So what it is is that, watch, the, watch, watch my thought process. Okay? So grab the iPad, <laughs> sit next to them, all right, and find the music app that allows you to draw or rewrite on the instrumentals and then have a conversation with them and let them pull up Doja Cat and then you pull up Barry White. Mm. <laughs> and then watch them say, oh. And then, and yeah. then, and then when the I Doja Cat- this was a Doja Cat and, record. And then, and then no, when that's the Barry White. And then when the Doja <laughs> Cat's, no, but uh, let's, let's say something different. Mm -hmm. And then when the record has strings, you can say, mm. strings? You need some Barry White in your life. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Because this is strengths. And then as they're listening to it, you say, and you know that Barry White couldn't write music. He did what? Yeah, Barry White wrote everything in his head. He composed everything. He literally would step to a piano and say, play this, play this, play this. He could not write a note of music. Really? That's crazy. Now you have them engaged in your conversation of how you want them to learn what's going on with music. I have grandkids. One is almost 10. Well, it's five now. And this is what I do with my grandkids, man. I mean, when they, when they start telling me to put on this. Now, I can't tell their my daughters or their mom what to play around them. I don't like that they play some of the hip hop hop they play around them. These are little five, six, seven, ten, shaking their booty and it's a lot of cursing and stuff going on. I wouldn't play it around them. You know what I'm saying? And so again, I'm a grand I'm a granddad. I'm supposed to care. So to say, well you're acting like how you doing us like her, your mother did 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 you no, but that's, but that's, but, but, but but that's but I'm that's, a parent, this is what a parent's supposed to no, do. I'm saying, no, supposed no, no, to care. No, I, 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 I never said not to care. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm making I, a generalization. Say, but it, but in the factuality, all up the point I want all the point I want everybody to get and I'll repeat it, okay, is it's not who's right to share, who's right not to share. It's not about the information. It's not about the education. All that's beyond viable. That's non-negotiable. It's 
speaking to people in a way they'll receive information because we're just speaking. And when they don't receive the information, we're saying they don't get it and they're calling us old. I agree. Give it to them in a way that they'll get it. And then when you do that, then you have them engaged. Listen, so that's, so that's why I said, so that's why I said, when you, when you say, can I hear Cardi B? Then here's, so here's how far I go. Here's how far I go. When a kid tells you to play Cardi B, I say, what Cardi B record is she looping something on? Hmm. <laughs> then mm-hmm. I say, yes, we could play Cardi B. Then mm-hmm. we play the Cardi B record. Then right after the record, the very next record, I don't even tell them what it is. I play the record the it came from. The original, where they got the sample And from. they say, what's That's that? What? And, you say, yeah. and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'll say this, watch, and I'll say this. I need you to be patient with me like I was with you. <laughs> I listen to you. I, I gave you four minutes of Cardi B. Give me four minutes of, of Uncle Time. And then, and then once they do that, and they go, oh, wait a minute. I'm like, yes, this is why I, and, and then, and watch this. And then instead of you telling them, they discover it. Once they discover it, they're that much more engaged. engaged. And they because, pay attention now. And, now, and, they, and, yeah. now they know, and then they may even say, what else you got? I was going to say to you, the problem, but, but the problem is this. The problem is I have grandkids now that will not know the samples because their mothers are listening to this generation of music. They're not listening to the music my mom listened to to know that that's a sample from Diana Ross or Michael Jackson or whatever. And that's the problem. They're playing nothing but to these children, to my grandkids, they're playing nothing but the Cardi B and but, all, but of this, the, but, but, all of this music. So they don't, they're not listening to the Denise Williams and all that when Cardi B or whoever is sampling it so now I'm to know. So this is where I come in. So now I'm gonna walk you into again. This is where I, I come I'm, into I'm gonna walk you into again to how we're being older. Okay? Mm-hmm. A 10 year old kid could walk in a room right now, right? And that person could play him brand Nubian. Mm-hmm. And he may connect to him. I may play him Dr. Dre. He may not connect with me. Mm-hmm. You may play him another record. He may not connect with him. It's not our job to say that's the problem. It's our job to respect and understand that there's a connection. Okay? When 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 a musician, when a musician becomes a famous musician, it's not because his whole family is musicians. He's influenced by one person or one situation. He gravitates towards it and he lives with that. So we gotta be strong, we gotta be strong to recognize that if we can, if we could, if we're that one connection, then we're that one connection. We can't be mad at the world by saying, well, no, how, come, no, how come you're all not the no, connection? No, 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 not mad at the world. Oh, 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 but oh, it's look. our job to show them and to no, teach no, them, like you said. No, and might, this no, is no, what no, I try to no, no, this is what might, I do. No, no, but it might just be your job. It may not be my job. I know, but may, this is what I do. I'm telling you, it may not be mom's job. You might be right. Yeah, but that's no No different than people having parents. Let me know when you want. Because Lou's going to do us. Was it recording the whole time? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so, so, so Lou, that's coming out. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's no, it's like it's like parents. It's like parents. Okay, parenting. Okay, mm. when you walk in the kitchen, dad's not behind you. Mom's behind you. Mm. Okay. Well, my dad was never there. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, but when you go out, when you go out in the woods, dad's behind you. Mom's not behind you. Again, I wouldn't know. Okay. No, but my point, my point <laughs> is that my point is that you don't go need to head. You know, mom's not putting you need to head of a car. Not putting you need to head of a car. Dad is. And then mm-hmm. to say, how come your mom's not doing it? He says, that's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Okay. This, I it, understand it, your it, point. It, it goes. It goes. It's this. It's this. Is this uh, rudimentary? I'll never forget this. I had ex-girlfriends that did this. They would have kids with baby fathers. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Time for the kid to get a haircut. And the mother saying, "I'm taking him to the barbershop." I said, "Oh hell no. Oh hell no. <laughs> okay. That's not your job. But he ain't here. He ain't pay. That ain't your job." That's his job. And if you take that away from the father, you're affecting the kid. You're, gonna, you're not even going to understand how much mm. you're affecting him. Mm-hmm. That's his job. I said, I said it's no different. I, and she said, you're not, you're not right. I said, all right, then let you have a daughter and let him braid her hair. Hmm. First. Look, First. Even, First. Even, even without <laughs> the baby mama shit, like, I, I had a, a, a very King Kong moment when it came time to take my son to the ball before the first time. Right, it's a pride you within that. Can't come. Like, right. This is a man thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. You and, remember and, and, forever. I, lose, the I let her come the first time. <laughs> <laughs> the first time. <laughs> Jenny, let her come. Jenny, take the picture. Jenny, take the picture. Jenny, take the picture. Yeah. 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 But 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 my point my point is is that. It doesn't mean that all five people got to take him to the barbershop. Mm. It's the father thing to do. Right. Okay. So if you're the music guy. And you have the history, and you have the collection, and you have ten thousand records. That's your job. That ain't her job. She only got fifty. She only got five hundred records in, 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 in her mm. phone. Mm. Right? It's, it's, it's your job to play the sample, and then watch this. Okay, here you go, Granddad. It's your job to bring the conversation somewhere within this arena, 
So now you can make them watch this. So they can see more of this. That's your job. Then they'll get even more of it. Because now it's two voices telling them, not just you. Maybe three voices. So all I'm saying is that it's the message. It's, the, it's how you deliver the message. We were the same exact way. Okay? They told, us, they told us not to smoke weed. Okay? They never showed us how to roll a blunt and watch us choking on the weed if you inhale too much. If we saw that from our uncle, brother, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're coughing your ass off right now. <laughs> but all we were told is don't do it. So within that, those that did says, I don't know why I don't do it. I still smell it in the house. But, and, we're, and we're built for that. I, I, I love that as we're built for that. It's just a matter of connecting those certain dots. That's a certain way. I, I, got, I, got kids, I got kids in my life right now that's going to sound ironic that love the fish. Because I took them. Hmm. <laughs> okay. And and now they're interested in what kind of fish, if I, if I go hiking, they're like, well, what kind of fish is in that water? I'm like, I'm there. I, I've done it. I, I don't have to do anything else. You're not asking the secondary questions. <laughs> I, think, I think with me, I'm really passionate about the, the hip hop. The knowing the history, just, you know, some people are like, well, that's why we say to you, who's going to respect what you're saying? Because they'll say, he never made it. Where's your album? Whatever. But you don't have to have a hit album out to be this person who's so so compassionate and passionate about the game, who's a music collector, who's always been in it, who identifies, you know, with. For me, it's very important that the youth know where it's coming from. You know the the difference in what they're listening to to before it, and because they don't respect they don't respect anything but the now. You know what I so, mean? They don't care. A lot of them don't care. And and for me, it's a lot of repetitive sameness stuff going on that to me is just not creative. It's not it's not you know, making an album with a drum machine or drums or whatever you're using using the same drum machine for an entire album to me is ridiculous. The young people will hear an 808 on every song. They don't even know what an 808 is, but on every song, and it's the rocking album of the century. But to me, to hear an entire album made with an 808 is disgusting. So let me. So, let so me. This, I'm. I'm really. I have a passion about this because this is what everyone in this room has been an artist or producer or whatever you with the A and R, and this is something that I've loved my entire life from the Mr. Magic, 11 years old, recording on the box to writing lyrics to making beats all night and doing R&B tracks with thinking of arrangements and hooks and where I could take this song to listen to somebody so simplistic with an 808 making an entire album with the same vocoder robot voice. <laughs> it's, for me, it drives me crazy. I don't want to hear no more of it. I'm, I'm disgusted <laughs> with it. Seriously, so, I'm disgusted with it. And it's because maybe, I, no, no, but you know. Let me, let me, let me, but, let, but, let's, but let's bring it forward. Okay. okay. Let's bring it forward. So first, this is how this is how I, I share the information. Mm -hmm. I don't share the information with the intent of saying who should receive the information. I give the information, period. Because what happens is, is that, and this podcast speaks for it, okay? I'll have an aspiring rapper, a female that just likes to listen to music, mm. a singer, and then a former executive all say, great show. Because you're talking, period. You're not saying talk to this one, talk to that one. You're just talking. talking. Right. So within that, the education is just the education. The information is just the information. The information. Now, yeah. when you start doing this, let me help you out. Let's do, let's do, let's do another demographic that's not kids. When you start saying to women, you know what your problem is? They've already turned off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? But when you talk about life in general and say, one of the problems that men and women have is... Now you're talking to everybody. It's more receptive way. So sometimes it's the how we're giving the information. Mm -hmm. So I'm not beating up, I'm not berating or beating up or trying to puff my industry historical muscles by saying, you should do this, you should do that. I'm just saying, you know that Tommy Mottola was the first person to have a production deal in the music industry. It's just facts. Mm -hmm. You should, you should, and, and, and if you've heard about Tommy Mottola, you know about Mariah Carey, it's something you should know. Not, not, not if you're old enough or young enough, it's just a, no, that's just a good thing to know. Hopefully a 13-year-old, 14-year-old <laughs> watching this who we'll says, well, who's Tommy Mottola? We'll look it up and see who it is and because they don't know who he is. Or, or, or more importantly, right, because the classic artists, you know, transcend generations. Mm -hmm. 
she'll hear the name Mariah Carey. <laughs> and they say, Tanya Matola worked for Mariah Carey, mm-hmm. then who's Tanya Matola? Mm-hmm. Right? That's like if I, if I told about something in Clive Davis history, that Clive Davis worked with Whitney Houston, then it's, it's, the, same. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's the same. It's the same thing. So a lot of, a lot of it is, is how. I have that conversation a lot of times with, it's not that your information is incorrect. It's not that the message is even wrong. It's a matter of how, you, how they have how to receive. They, receive. they have to receive it mm-hmm. the same way we do. Okay? We're in relationships. Okay, man, woman, child, whatever the case may be. Your wife come to you, your girlfriend come to you, your spouse come to you, and comes with us. She come with the finger, what you hear? Nothing. Mm. She come with the high tone voice, what you hear? Nothing. She come with a plate of food, your favorite meal, what you hear? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay, so that's so that's so that's how that works down. So I'm, I, I, again, I, and, and and respectfully, what this has been so far is receptive because we're just giving the information. Now let's go back to this one because you brought this up, all right? This is a big one. So I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a go to my history of what I've learned because I never, somebody in this room will say it's differently, but I wouldn't call myself that I used to bang on beats. I would say I put things together, but one of the things I, I learned about Puff that was miraculous, I thought this was genius, only because from a technical standpoint, if you're paying attention, you know what this means. Puff at Daddy's house had a Neve board and an SSL board. And what he would do, because for those that know, here we go, the SSL board was considered a hip hop board. Mix hip hop records on. Although you mix R&B records on as well, okay? But you would go to a SSL board first to mix a hip hop record. Mm. Then the Neve board came along. The Neve board had a much warmer mixing feel. So it became not the not the status quo, but a lot of people like to mix on Neve boards for R&B records, mm-hmm. right? What Puff would do, this is crazy, stupid but genius, he would mix the hip hop records on the Neve, Neve board. board and mix the R&B records Vice on the SSL mm-hmm. board. So, Go against the grain. So what would happen is, it would have that yeah. much more mm-hmm. pop on it mm-hmm. because of the hip hop mix gotcha. on the drums to face records. Mm-hmm. By the same token, the lush vocals on the One More Chance remix would sound crazy like, oh my God, like he has, he got faith in Mary sounding amazing on his record because he mixed the vocals on the knee board. That brings it to that. A lot of people don't know that. Okay. He, if he felt, he might be looking at me like. <laughs> <laughs> don't give out the secrets. <laughs> but that was another thing that was the difference with the SP-1200 mm. and the MPC-60. Mm-hmm. Right? The, S, the SP-1200. It was raw, analog. Raw, you could, you raw could not. You, you, mm-hmm. you, you tell DJ Premier in the SP-12 in the studio see what happened. Him and Pete, they use it for years. Him and Pete, him I think and Pete, Pete still uses SP 1200. You know that, you know that Q-tip used to use both, mm-hmm. and would have them working with each other. Mm-hmm. The Akai sampler rack. Mm-hmm. Always have the rack for the long samples. So what did you work on? Oh man, I I was always an MPC dude. So the first thing I got was the the first MPC sixty. Jesus. I had an MPC sixty and a Korg M one. Then as time went on, I switched over. Then I got a 2500 Excel. Then I had an MPC 3000. Did you ever try a 1200? Mm, I went right from 60 to 25 to 3000. And that's what I did. So you the never bulk of my trip. Uh, I played around with one. The first person I knew who had one was Navelle Hodge and Eddie F. They're the only two in Mount Vernon that had them. So I would go to Navelle's house <laughs> and play on it. He actually let me borrow it once. And I took it to Paul Pryor, who was once our DJ. And I did the beats for the Stars of Shining thing on it and whatever. But I learned from I learned a lot from Navelle because not to say we lived in the slums and in the projects. We lived in a, a you know, we weren't really so wealthy. Navelle was in the big house with the whatever. He always had the high tech equipment. So whatever I would play on would be with Navelle. We're talking about before 
the 1200s. I'm talking about when it was just a drum machine, when it was a Roland 707, and then an 808. I remember carrying the big black, the original 808 around. Then it was the 909. So Roland was the most popular. You had the 707, then you had the 727. I had all the extra little cowbells and th- th- all the extra triangles and all that. But you had the 909. But then you had a Korg DDD1 that was kind of popping. Teddy did a lot of songs with a Korg DDD1. Yes. Like a lot of the, you know, the Just Got Paid's and you hit a little shuffle and then all that is that. But then um, when we stepped into the SP-12 and then the MP, it kind of changed. But I was an MP dude. I was an MPC dude. That was what I, I, I could work like a typewriter. Um, mm. But um, <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> they don't know what a typewriter is. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and production has changed now. You know what's so crazy? And so I'm not mad at it. I, I was not, I'm not mad at it. I remember I had the 3.5 floppy disk drive in my, in, in my joint, right? They don't know what a floppy disk is. A little hard <laughs> floppy disk, right? And I remember I had to sit down. I had, yo, is. I had to sit down with CDs and records, and I had to actually take the boom and the snare from each James Brown record and break record or whatever. I had to get the kick and the snare from they it. They barely know what a CD is. Okay. So I had to, but I had to, I remember I would spend a day. This, this is what I'm saying when you talk about your love for this. I would spend a day with, with blank floppies. And I'm talking about just collecting kicks and snares and rim shots and hi-hats. And now they have software that gives you all of the stuff I sampled back in the day. And they just give it to these kids. They're giving them loops already looped that they're just looping it and putting music on. It's, they're, they're not they're with selling, the raw production. They're selling packages yeah. of albums now. They're doing like, it like, like, like there's a thing yeah. that you can buy. You can buy, the, you can buy Swiss beats. You can, no, no, you lay can out buy the and, To Pimp a Butterfly Drum sound. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can buy Swiss Beats drums. You can buy just Blaze drums and sounds. I know. But I remember sitting down, truncating, chopping it up and saving them. Truncate. Explain what that is. <laughs> when you t- Explain what that is. No, no. That's, no, no. So, yeah, that's a right. great right. hip-hop term that all producers yeah. know yeah. and what that represents. You should explain what that is. So when, you take, when, you take a, when you take a sample, <laughs> it's when you take a sample. Or a drum sound. Or, or any sample, any it's a sample though sample. you take the sample, and you have to get it exactly on the part of the sample you want. So sometimes you hit record and you get a little little space and fuzz and air before the actual starting of what you want to sample. Before the boom, you get the shh, then the boom. So you got to take the <laughs> shh out and just get to the boom, 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 boom. And you you tighten it up from the end to the start, and that's the truncating and. Let, let's simplify that. <laughs> truncating is trimming. Trimming, trimming, truncating, same thing. So all of that stuff. But um, I remember spending a day, which now you buy software and you, it's all there. And I remember walking in the studio being amazed at all these things stacked to the ceiling and compressors and all of that. Now they have them in the software lined up. But I, I'm one of these dudes, I love the keyboard drum machine. I want to bang on the keyboard and bang on the drum machine. I don't want to have a mouse and a computer to make a, a song. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are making records like that now with a computer. Mm-hmm. They have a computer. And, and a little keyboard controller, and that's it. I like the drum machine banging on the pads. I want the keyboard playing on the keys yeah, and analog. Old line. They're not even using keyboards anymore. More. They're just painting in the notes on a piano roll. Mm-hmm. Really? Drum just putting the notes you want and it yeah. plays right on it. On, on a grid. Bang, 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 bang. And they're playing. And it's playing. Bang, bang, bang. And then you get the, 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 the message behind them, the, the melody and the bass line and all. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Today's today's young producers don't right? don't play music, <laughs> right? Wow, you times okay? have changed. Hey, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, okay. it's what it is. <laughs> it's kind of, I, right. Listen, it's kind of really, it's for, the really for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life, I just want a keyboard and drum machine that I'm comfortable with using, and I'm gonna keep it forever till I die. I and, you know. I will I will I will add to your musical concern with my artistry concern. <laughs> All right, because there, there's two phases. There's a soft, there's a visual phase, and then there's an audio phase that has taken our music out of, I don't want to say scope, but out of a caring place. Oh, before, I love that. Before, before video. Love that. Before video, the song had to paint the picture. So that's why songs by you know a Stevie Wonder or or Rolling Stones or Beatles or John Lennon or Paul Simon, right, would have so much depth 
That's why The Wall is such an amazing album because of the depth. Because sonically, it paints a picture. I see that. Once Absolutely. you have videos, the picture's painted. Painted, yeah. So you can halfway give a damn about the musical content because you say, I'm going to fix it on the video side. Because mm -hmm. if I tell a good story, bop, bop, bop. Mm -hmm. okay? so, that, so that's one way where, where music kind of took us a step back. All right. The second place that music took a step back production. is because of software. No, because of the simplicity yeah. of software. Simplicity, Whereas yeah. you had to have a semblance of music. You had to know how to play something mm -hmm. to be able to produce something. Mm -hmm. Well, now in a place where you don't have to play anything. They're giving you stuff. They're giving you giving stuff. Giving you loops, giving you bass lines. And, and, that, and that takes a lot away, mm -hmm. a lot away the from getting, of getting what you want. So as mm -hmm. I was telling, as I stated on a, a couple of these other podcasts before, is as we're having fights and debates over good records and bad records and what the artist should and shouldn't be doing, we're arguing more than they're even caring about putting the energy to production. We, we, we're yelling back and forth, that's what you be doing, that's what you be doing. I'm like, they're not even doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they, they don't give that much of a damn. So that's so so, I, so my, my mantra for this my mantra for 2021 make the damn record mm -hmm. like all that goes back to if you if you have all this technology you have all this access you know if if you if you have if you can play and you cannot play or if you, even if you can't play it's still give it to you but yet you're blessed enough to be in a position to put stuff out there can you put something that 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 counts please mm -hmm. not not an 808 one drum sound for the whole album like that's just and this Crazy. is why I love the Anderson Pack, the Bruno Mars, the, the Silk Sonic. Yeah. This is why. This is why. This makes when I'm I, on my way here. I was playing that album, and I was so like, "Wow, this is what the world needs. This is what I'm talking about. This is music production. This is all the changes and the chord inversions and the progressions. This is what I'm talking you about. Must be talking about the Silk Sonic. Album. I'm talking about the Silk Sonic album. This is what I'm talking about. And this my is this is what this is what Silk we're Sonic missing. Album this is, is the, blast the, off. music has been so blast off is dope. Music has been so shallow, so repetitive, so simplistic. The same 808s, the same robot. I'm tired of it. I really am. I mean, I have a right to say this. I'm tired Silk of Sonic it. Silk Sonic looks like. The spinners. We need the when Silk they Sonic. Perform, by the way, we need the Silk Sonic. Yeah, so we need the Silk Sonic though, because that's real music. Felipe, you know, Wynn that's is real music. Addison Pack. I loved, I love your joint. Do, I love your do joint. Do your history on Felipe Wynn, by the I way. I love your joint. You put me onto that free national joint with the music, with the <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Cook all my dope. No, no, yo, but the music to that joint and how it's arranged. Yo, you know I play that every day on the way to work. I, I hit rewind. Gun, I hit rewind. I hit rewind. The Eric music Lee is, this is stating your lyrics. No, but this is what I you this, but this cook on my dope. dope. Bag on my dope. Yo, but this, <laughs> but but what I'm saying Does is, your is that mom know you do that. Yo, but that what I'm saying is I want us Rick to get back to. Bread. I want us to get back to <laughs> production where people are like, okay, that's the same kick, that's the same snare. Can we change the drums? Can we not do the robot thing again? Like, can even, we, even, even, every even, song after even, song after even, song, can man. I, can I throw some, some shit just to be a troll <laughs> on, on your Silk Sonic page? So I've been, I've been overhearing conversations, however valid or invalid. What do you think of the, the notion that people have that Bruno Mars is just appropriating black music? So when it comes to appropriation as an overall conversation, I say, if you're not going to shut it all down, then shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Because the same person that has that problem with Bruno Mars is the same person probably listening to Peaches right now with mm -hmm. Justin Bieber giving on the Daniel Susan. Mm -hmm. So leave me the fuck alone. Don't pick, choose, and refuse when you want to say it and do it. If you're going to do it, shut it all down or be quiet about it. Mm -hmm. Because when, when, cause when, cause when, watch this. Here's my favorite, not my favorite, but here's the best argument. Because when people of Caucasian nature like Drake, hmm. and then people who are not Caucasian like Justin Timberlake, what the fuck are we doing? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I'll, let the, I'll let the song speak for itself on that one. And, 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 I, and ironically, <laughs> it'd be like a, a girl named Shanika Will with straight blonde hair mm. and blue contacts. Wow. Okay. Okay. Oh, Good oh, analogy. Oh, 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 yeah. you see some, or you see, or you see, or you see the most chocodile looking goddess mm -hmm. running to a Bieber, running to a Bieber yeah. and a Timberlake concert. Yeah. Instead of saying, 
that's supposed to be Usher and be mad about it. But it's not. So stop it. One of the worst things about arguing about cultural appropriation is that it's convenient to when it benefits you to where you don't like it that you want to complain about it. So stop it. Mm. I agree. Absolutely. <laughs> Without a doubt. All right. So we want to end it on that note? No, no. Because <laughs> it's time to go. It's 8.30. We've been podcasting out for a long time. We had a lot we oh, talked about. Oh, man. Man, I love, listen, That's I love this, man. Let me tell you something. I'm just saying, I love this because this is therapy for me. When, I mean, even though we're not making music and oh. recording records, we have a lot. We have a lot of the same. Like, we see a lot. What we speak, for, for us to talk and do our last podcast and you to say, oh, man, Superstar and how Superstar the record <laughs> that I'm heading up here. I'm on, I'm on the highway in traffic and I'm listening to Anthony Hamilton and he remakes Superstar. I'm like, we're all, we're there. We're in tune. So we're in when, tune. I, I did some, I, I mentioned this, Lou didn't know, we did a, uh, we did an IG live, me and, and Quan, that's another young man that, that hangs out with us, right? Mm -hmm. And Lou, oh my God, I made him, I won't say I made him happy, but he is so vindicated. And I told him, I said, the vindication speaks to this having viability of what we're doing because we're talking about Tyler, the creator in the summer about how his album is the best rap album of the year. And then when the nominations come out and he's there, we're validated. Mm -hmm. When you, when, when you sit here and right, and you, and you are losing your breath and your heart and your soul over J Cole, while we're laughing and saying, calm down, it's going to be okay. And then J. Cole gets nominated for Album of the Year in hip hop. Mm -hmm. You're vindicated. Mm -hmm. And that means that what we're doing has a viability to it because we're not, my phrase, we're not guessing. <laughs> we're not guessing. His, Lou, oh my God. His song that he almost popped the gasket over. Heartbreak anniversary. Got nominated for R&B Song of the Year. You can't tell him nothing. You cannot tell that boy nothing. <laughs> He's, oh, hey. I was like, Lou, Lou, has nothing to do with the point about what got him there, which still is like I want you. But yes, the record of the, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're laughing. Because if you, if you see the podcast, you will see this guy's gasket. <laughs> we, had, we, had to look at, we had to look at him and say, you good? <laughs> yeah. You got one? Mm. You got one? All right, quick Grammy, quick Grammy thing that we mentioned before that I have a problem with. Major problem with. Song of the year, record of the year, album of the year. Are you talking about the thing Grammys. with George Michaels? No, no, no. That's Grammy. when I stopped watching no, no. it. The Grammy Awards just came, the Grammy nominations came out two weeks ago. Song of the year, record of the year, album of the year. Are you ready? Oh, I'm sorry. And best new artist. Who's this? No, no, listen. 10 in each category. 10? Yes. When did they start doing that? The so is, many. That's why. This is why I bought it up. <laughs> I bought it up. Do you, this is so. How do we got ten best new artists? Do you know when I stopped watching it? Is when George Michaels got the soul R and B album. He won it over. He won R and B. Yeah. He won it over. It was over. I think in there was uh, Keith Sweat. I think it was. It was like uh, like for our radio at that time. But what we listened to, Some it was him. It was Bobby Brown. <laughs> it was a bunch of R and B. He wanted over. He over Don't be cruel. Yo, he wanted over. Yo, my man, he wanted. He wanted over. Yo, he did this. That's hysterical. I'm telling you, it was Keith Sweat. It was Bobby. It was nothing but. <laughs> he wanted over our our favorite R and B artist of that time that was killing the radio waves. When he won it, I stopped watching it because then I realized it's How bigger than that. How are there it's, ten best new artists? I'm glad you're having this conversation. How are there ten? Best new. I'll even ten? give. You, I'll, I'll give. give you, I'll give you. I'll give you. Absolutely. I'll give you ten albums of the year. Because if you want to go there, culture wise, you can say probably two in the culture vein, one or two in the rock vein, one or two in the pop vein, a big one in R and B land, big one in pop. I can see how you can get there. So is it that they're the throwing year. them all? Are they pop and all these? No, no, they're, they're putting all, them all, all in the same category. All, no, for, for those specific this categories. Yeah, for those new specific categories, the ones I mentioned, those are the four categories that have 10 nominees. The other ones are broken down back to five. So best R&B song is five. Best rap song is five. Best rap album is five. But album of the year, song of the year, record of the year, and best new artists are 10. ten. So take a step back. Before we get into the records, go with each one. How are there 10 best new artists? That's not no. possible. It's not. Of those 10, five have to be garbage. Yeah. 
Or five have to Most be. Most of them. I, are, I think. I think like we did the Mount Rushmore. Three hot ones. I think we do. I think we could knock it down to five. All right. <laughs> I think again. I'm not saying, Lou. I, I got your point on this. The new now and the new wow. I get that. It just still seems like a bit much. No, it is because you got little because because well, you got because you got little Nas X mm. in the same room. Mm. We leave the door open. <laughs> ridiculous, <laughs> absolutely ridiculous, from, from, from preposterous, Prepos- it, from a from from a popularity it's perspective ridiculous. alone. It's a bad conversation. Why watch it? But, but, if, it, but it. if this is the music business, mm. that's that. No, that's like to me. Watch it. That's like. That's like. Just because a black exploitation movie is huge, doesn't mean it's better than The Godfather. Right. <laughs> That's what Lil Nas X is compared to leave the door open. Lil Nas X is what you complain about production wise. Absolutely. There's no question about it. There's no question about leave, it. Leave, leave the door open. Actually had 15 people in the room playing instruments. So I have two questions to lay out to you. The, this is good. The, the first one is, did you peep the new category. Oh yes, rap? yes. I didn't yes. watch it. I don't watch no, no, it. So please watching. let me know. Just the nomination. Tell Just me about it. Yeah, I yes, yes. Here we go. Here we go. I didn't here look, we go. So, I don't so, know. so they now have. So, okay, wait, wait. So Curtis Jackson, you failed in your attempt to kill this. <laughs> so what happened? What happened? Listen, listen. Curtis Jackson, aka Fifty Six, okay, is the one that brought to light that Ja Rule. Isn't really rapping. He damn near thinks he's a singer. Okay. And that's not hip hop. That's not hip hop. Okay, I'm going back now. For him to start singing on hooks himself and do it as is. I'm talking about 50 Cent. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because he the, criticized the, the, him and he the, did exactly what he's doing. Yes. What he the, did. The winner of appropriating that style, now use the little using the word, has been Drake. Because mm-hmm. Drake is. The, the melodic singer rapper yeah. guy. Well, he's too damn popular Monotonous, now. Yeah. Why is he so popular? There's now a rap category called best melodic rap song. Really? <laughs> yes. That's one of the categories. Yes. Man, I haven't watched them in years. And I don't want to <laughs> watch ja, them. The Ja Rule category. The 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 the, the, the Ja Rake. The basically, ja basically, that's what you're category. saying. Category. So there has for melodic rappers who sing rap, they have their own category. Yes. For the boys that go, hey baby. Yeah. Yes. Boys. It's a category. Five that's nominees. Wait, ten years Are you kidding me? Melodic rap, like award. Oh my. Or the God. or the Drake one because he went. But I mean, Ja Rule's big enough. But you, the Ja Rake. That's what I'm gonna call it. Wow. The, the Ja Rake category. And they have five nominees. Now, now I'm gonna say this out loud, and I need some help. If you are melodically rapping, aren't you not rapping? Right. You're <laughs> half singing. It's not totally rap. It's like you're creating a new a well, new the singers don't want them in the singing category. Right. The only per- rappers don't want them in the rappers rappers category. category. So only people that's mad. So they're creating a only, new There's only one person, there's only one group that's mad. There's only one group that's pissed off. Bone Thugs and Harmony. Mm, because they did it a long time ago, yeah. That's what the hell we do. Yeah, it's true. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, you can go, as, like, you can go as far back as the Force MCs. I was like, <laughs> Ebony. Now, here's the here's second question. That's crazy. That, that was insane, by the way. Yes, I did see that. I was like, what the, what the, what the buffuck? It's like they're creating a new artist now. You're not even a rapper, now, singer. Now, You're in the middle. Now, now, now That's now, crazy. Now, going back to your argument or your criticism about the, the BS of the industry, now you just birthed a whole new generation of shit. Now you're going to get a bunch of shit. Just be, That's not real hip hop. You're going to get a bunch of shit mm-hmm. just to be in this damn category. Because I, I can't really sing and mm-hmm. I can't really rap. But what I can do is this bullshit right here. Yeah. I could break it. Yeah. I could jerk it right now. Yeah, sing the rap where you're not I really rapping. I could jerk it. Kind of like, what's my man with the eye? He kind of sings his stuff too. The one with the messed up eye. That shot Freddy somebody. Watt. Yeah, that cat. He's he's a singing rapping cat. Like he's rejuvenated. He's in that. He's in that. No, he got a category, category. for himself. He's, he, he's in that you category. Have, you have artists that can go back to their labels that says. This is what I'm doing. Second question. Mm. Second question. We, we, we all call you the job rate category, right? The job rate category. <laughs> that's that's really interesting. I didn't know that. That's interesting. So here's the second question. Wow. And, this, and this is mm. confrontational in a sense, in self accountability. 
are you, I'm, I'm assuming that you're not because you don't participate, but are you a voting member of the academy? So here's an issue that a lot of people don't know. That room isn't what you think it is. That room isn't like the final four for the NCAA where you have like 60 people from around the world in the room watching the games. This is the beauty of what we're doing right now. That room's a lot smaller than you think. Hmm. There's a lot less people in that room than you think. There's a lot less people voting on this situation than you think. So when you would say, I'm, 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 I'm giving an exaggeration on purpose so that people could either get mad and correct me or John Platt could come off the plateau and tell me exactly what's going on. I'm not trying to criticize, I'm just saying what it is. All right, Lou liked that one when I said John Platt. You may think that like 30,000 people are voting on each one of these categories. It's more like 30. It's not 30,000, it's more like 30, 30 people. <laughs> wow. And these things come across their email on their desk like a Christmas invitation. There is, there is, there is not a, everybody's going to the Jacob Javits Center and we're going to be with clickers and we're going to put up the categories and we're going to have everybody in the room and we're all going to vote and the percentage is going to win like that type. They don't do that at all. It is a beyond antiquated system. Knocked the old man over and swore he killed him. Sorry. So. Because <laughs> I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, is that, and, you know, Tal is exaggerating on purpose, but more realistically, <laughs> it's probably like maybe not 30, but maybe 3,000. It's not, but that even... But that's still small. That's not an indication. It, that's not an indication. Like, yeah. it's still a very, very small thing. Mm. And, you know, when you talk about, like, the George Michael thing, that is because a lot of... Those 3,000 people? Executives, those black executives, don't join the academy to actually steer what's happening, what's happening with it. And then, this is also good, now, this part is good. There are requirements yes. for you to be able to join, yes. which speak to your involvement in the industry mm -hmm. at a certain level, yep. your involvement in the industry as far as participation in actually making recordings, and your participation in the, in the industry as far as actually dealing with the records themselves. So, for example, promo world, A&R world, engineering world can put you in position to be a voting member outside of being an actual producer yeah. or artist. But you have to have a certain amount of credits, credits and that, that that and recommendations that speak to accountability. Now, so what I'm what I'm saying is to specifically challenge your take, Eric, on 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 this in general, is that at least I am certain that half the people in this room qualify to be voting members of the RIAA. I'm certain of that. Like, I know that I do. I know that Tally does. I'm not sure if Kenny does. Kenny probably does because he promotes records. He promotes records of significant right. of 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 that of, of that would that would check a box. Right. And 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 look, they don't necessarily have to check the box if they have been commercially released and you have the credit for it. It counts. It counts. And then they look at, they add, they add a couple of more small parameters as far as kind of where they rank and stuff to a small extent as well, too. Because you can't necessarily, because sometimes they, they get into a debate about that. But I, but I got your point. I got mm. your point. So my, 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 my pushback, which is something that I've been thinking about, ironically, around the time that you called and said you were going to have a conversation about the nominations, is actually putting in skin in the game in this thing you know, like the fact like you can you can we can joke about the melodic rap category as crazy as it is but what that represents to me is a shifting of the demographic in those small rooms so that hey look we need to make this category because we we want to separate this from that. Like, we respect hip-hop so much that 
the melodic sing songy shit should be recognized separately. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't want, the other shit. if you don't want Drake to compete with Nas, do this category. Right. Hmm. <laughs> Otherwise, Drake's gonna compete with Nas. I'm not even saying that's the right way to go about it. I'm saying that, that might be the rationalization why they did it. Right. Now, what's also gonna happen too is those same people in that room, all those people that have those artists. Mm-hmm. So they're fighting for their cause as well, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Soul Sonic, I apologize. Summer Walker, I apologize. You didn't put your albums out early enough to be considered in the album category because her has all the Summer Walker nominations, which, which somebody felt vindicated up the Bawazu for that as well, too. Her is, her is <laughs> dope. Yeah, but not she the Summer Walker album. No, 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 but can, she's dope. Can we wait until the young is back to talk about someone out? <laughs> yes. Because he's gonna have to answer. He's gonna have to answer and some questions. He's gonna have to answer. Some right. Questions. Shout out to Sean Garrett, by the way. Still skin in the game. Okay. Doing a lot of writing on that one. Yeah. So you all right? Yep. How long we do today? Okay. All right. But remember, we have about fifteen minutes of that then, conversation. Then we're, then we're fantastic. <laughs> and, then we got, and we got about three edits with him. <laughs> <laughs> three edits with him. You want? You want to? What you want? You say you want to spit six? No, minutes? no. Go ahead. You sure you want to spit six? No, no. Cause y'all shooting down. Y'all shooting down my. Y'all shooting down my sixteen. Y'all shooting down. Let's get it on tape because I got all jokes ready. Nah, go ahead. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. You know why? See, if everybody say, yeah, he do that. That's hot. Go ahead. But y'all like, no, no, you don't. You ain't got it. Nobody want to hear that. You old. Oh, so now, no. Now I don't. Because I have ready? too many eyes against me looking down. So no. You ready? If y'all inspired, watch, watch, if y'all was watch, inspirational watch, in what I was thinking of doing, then that's one thing. We I'm absolutely, I'm we absolutely, I absolutely support your decision to not do a sixteen. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> so I will not spit a sixteen. I want to. I want to see the sixteen. No, that's all right. I absolutely now. support you. I absolutely support. Oh no. Jesus! <laughs> this is industry rule number four thousand and eighty. We're culture. No, no. <laughs> we're qualitative content, which this is not it. Count. <laughs> okay, I gotta take two seconds to say this, Miss Isis, Miss Rashida, you have been very beyond supportive from day one. You are appreciated, you are respected, and thank you very much. Remember this: darkness and light cannot coexist at the same time. So if you want to pick one, pick the light. We're going. What he's saying is, pick not to do the sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was gonna spit sixteen bars. I do it on the next one. Lottie, <laughs> I'll do it on the next one. Lottie. <laughs> <laughs>